I've been asked a lot recently about what I've done to my GS to make it a more capable off-road bike. I'm going to show you a couple of things that are small free tips that you can do to your bike to things that are, well, significant investments. It starts with something that's free and that should be done to any motorcycle no matter what you're riding. The first thing you should do to any dual sport or adventure bike before you go off-road is disconnect the safety for the side stand. This one here, what I've done is grounded off the outer edge so it looks better. There's three wires in the wiring harness. All I did was splice those together. This way I can ride off with the motorcycle and the side stand down. That allows me to mount from the high side of the motorcycle or just to simply mount the motorcycle, use my weight to stand it up and ride off. That allows me to conserve energy. That's really a safety item if you're gonna be going off road. I switched out to the Wild at Heart levers out of South Africa. I like these levers because they're very short, means that if I impact the ground really heavy, they're less likely to hit the lever and break it. But even more importantly, it allows me just to have a two finger lever. So these fingers are always free. They're never gonna get pinched or in the way. You might choose for a longer lever on your bike, but I really do like these uh, Wild at Heart levers. While I'm on the handlebars, I did switch out to double take mirrors. I'm not a huge fan of changing mirrors before they break because after all, they're not broken. But because I do a lot of video work, by switching out to the double take mirrors, not only do I have a mirror that's more durable, but also that gives me a ball mount. So if I want to mount a camera, I'm already in position and I can just use that ball mount and use the camera whenever I'm doing video. The two most expensive changes I made were to suspension and wheels. So I've switched out to a set of uh, Woody's wheels. What that 21 inch does is allow me to get a much narrower tire, which allows it to track better off-road. And also it's got a larger diameter, which means it can roll over things better. The back is just a 17, a stock diameter, but it's a narrower rim, so I can run narrower tires. I did an entire video on just these wheels so if you want to know the details, go watch that video. The other change that goes with these wheels are suspension. Now, one of the things to keep in mind is that because I went from a 19 inch rim to a 21, I changed the attitude or the, the way the bike sits. It sits nose high as soon as you put that taller wheel on. So I upgraded my suspension front and rear to better quality suspension and to correct the ride height. Now, the lucky thing is I'm on a GS. So the difference between the the normal GS suspension and going up to the rally or the GSA suspension or down to a low suspension is 25 millimeters. The difference in rim to the axle is 20 millimeters. So just by switching from a GSA front shock to a standard and maintaining a GSA spec on the back means my bike was level. So it's not just about upgrading suspension. You have to think about all the other changes you did. Come here and take a look at the suspension up here. So this here is the Tractive Suspension. This is the same company that makes the Tour Tech Suspension. I bought this from uh, Ted Porter down in California. Fantastic people. They talk a lot about their suspension. They'll spend time with you. But this allows additional adjustments, manual adjustments. And you can either purchase ESA or you can go full manual. And again, I switched to a standard on the front and a GSA on the rear to make a compensation for the wheel diameter changes that I made. Here's a small detail that you may not think about. This is a protector for the frame. And generally you'll think of something like this to protect the, you know, the frame paint. And I'm actually not worried about the paint, but what this does is give me a very smooth surface. So when I'm locked in tight against the bike with my boot and my riding pants, I'm not destroying the pants, squishing the pants between the boot and the bike. So this is actually about having a smooth surface, not necessarily about protecting the paint. I'm currently running the Outback MotorTech uh, protection system with the skid plate and the, and the engine guard. The reason I went with these specifically is because it doesn't wrap around the back of the cylinders. I'm not hitting my shin. They do a decent job. The only downfall to these is certainly the front of this runs a little short of the exhaust and I have picked up some exhaust damage where on some of the other skid plates, I haven't had that problem. Love the crash bars. Skid plate is just a little short of what I like. So I may switch out something later. Pick what you like. 
On the rear brake, I'm using an alt rider step, which means when I'm sitting, it's easy for me to rock into that lower step. And if I'm riding off-road and rocked back on my heel, I can grab the higher portion of it. And that makes it much easier to have good control while I'm off-road. I do run an oversized foot peg. These ones are from Black Dog. They're a very simple design. They don't have any extra bolts or anything to fail. They're a wide and, well, both long and wide, which helps reduce my fatigue when riding off-road if I'm wearing boots like I'm wearing today, which are the BMW Venture Grip boots, which are more of a touring boot, as opposed to my more aggressive CD Crossfires or Tech 7s. For bag choice, I actually have several different panniers I use on the bike depending on the mission, but the most common luggage I use is the Lone Rider Moto Bags. The reason is, is these are a semi-rigid bag, which provide me a little protection that if I land, I may not injure myself as much. Also, they don't dent and they move around. Good size, easy to pack, great size. I did a, a full review on these bags if you want to hear the details, but it is my go-to bag most of the time. Up on the handlebars, this is one of my favorite modifications. I keep a little piece of Velcro with a strap. It's right here on the handlebars. This is my emergency brake, so if I'm pointed downhill, or if I go to pick up the bike and it's off camber or stuck, it locks that front brake so I don't have the bike roll away from me. Inexpensive modification, well worth it. The other major change I have up here is the handlebars. Now I do have risers on this bike because the bars themselves have a very short rise. What I did is bought bars that are flatter, meaning that they don't come back to me as much, they go forward. And that allows me to have more room and more stretch on the bike. The risers are just there to help correct the height to get back to the OEM height. I don't have risers to make it taller, I have it risers to bring it back to correction. I did an entire video breaking down risers and what all that means. So make sure you check out the video if you haven't already watched it. The last two modifications are significant on this bike. One is uh, cheap and it's a GS item. And that is I'm using a Fox Wolf wireless charger. This uh, clips into the factory cradle and it allows me to charge the, the bike. And they run anywhere from uh, around $40 to $60 depending where you're buying them from. And the last thing is something that nobody can get a hold of anymore. And right here, you'll see I have an in and out switch, and that's for the winch. So I do have a, an XT17 Warren winch, which unfortunately they no longer manufacture. And I wish we could start a campaign uh, towards Warren asking when they're going to open that back up again. So if you really want to get one of these winches, maybe start sending some emails and see if they get enough information to start making that again. Otherwise, uh, it's just a cool thing I have that you don't get to have. That's it guys, that's what I've done to my bike to make it more off-road capable. Thanks for watching the channel. See you guys next time. Cut. How do you think? Yeah, it's uh, 15 minutes, 18 seconds. Okay, and we chop everything out, we're probably eight minutes.